Yeah, did you watch that interview the other day with Conor Ben and Coogan? You notice how like Coogan's like peeled off that MTK global sticker, you know, off his microphone. You can see it, can't you? You can see that he's like peeled off the MTK global sticker, you know, off that mic. Look, you can see, can't you? You know that there's some like remnants of an MTK global sticker, you know, Coogan, he peeled it off, didn't he? You know, he's trying really hard, you know, to distance himself from Daniel El Chapan. You know, an MTK Global, you know, after the FBI have put out a $5 million reward, you know, on El Chapan's head. You know, and they're fucking targeting, you know, associates of Daniel El Chapan. So, you know, Coogan is like trying to like conveniently distance himself, you know, from MTK and Daniel El Chapan. You know, it's fucking obvious, isn't it? You know, he used to have like an MTK Global sticker on his mic. You know, he's peeled it off, hasn't he? He's trying to really distance himself. You know, he's not allowed in America, is he? That's why he's not at the, you know, the Canelo Bivol fight. He's not there. He's not, he didn't go to the Katie Taylor Serrano fight either. You know, he's banned, you know, from America. He's not allowed in, man. He's being investigated, you know, by the FBI. So Coogan is trying to like backtrack, you know, he's trying to like cut all ties, you know, of El Chapan and MTK Global. You know, he used to love him, didn't he? But like, you remember when Barry McGuigan was in that documentary, you know, dissing El Chapan. And like after the documentary, you know, Coogan, you know him and those other IFL fuckers, they all ran around, didn't they? And started like interviewing people who would like praise MTK and El Chapan. Ben Davison and Spencer Fearon and, you know, people like that who would obviously praise El Chapan. You know, people who have had dealings with him in the past, you know, who have got business connections with him. Ties, you know, that Spencer Fearon. He was like the head of the MTK Global Foundation. So Coogan got those IFL fuckers, you know, to interview people like him, you know, knowing that they'd praise El Chapan. He's trying to control the narrative in it, Coogan. He was trying to play God, you know, trying to trying to bend the truth, you know, being biased and that. It's obvious, isn't it? Because Coogan was getting that money from him, money. He? he was laundering that cash on it, Coogan. He's balls deep in the investigation, you know, from the FBI. You know, now that the FBI have put a five million dollar reward, you know, on El Chapahan's head. You know, anybody with any kind of information that would lead to his arrest gets a nice little five million dollar reward. So the FBI are on him, you know, and they're on anyone else, you know, who's associated with him. So Coogan's like peeling off stickers in it, you know, trying to distance himself. You know, he's trying to act like he don't know El Chapan now, isn't it? That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to, he's trying to deny him. You know, he's acting like he don't know him, you know what I mean? Coogan, he's kind of betrayed El Chapahan, hasn't he? You know, like how Judas did to Jesus. It's kind of like Judas, in it? He did the same to James Helder, though, didn't he? You know, James Helder helped build up the channel, IFL. You know, he fucking contributed, you know, to get into a billion views. He was there at the beginning, you know, he did the dirty work, travelling around, going to shit shows. But Coogan, he kind of betrayed him as well, didn't he? So that's what he's like, man. You know what I mean? Fuck, you know, that's what he's like. That's what he did to James, didn't he? You know, he kind of sold him out, didn't he? Like Judas did to Jesus. That used to be his boy, him. My boy, him. But he fucked him off, didn't he, Coogan? So he's kind of done the same with El Chapahan, you know? Peeling off the sticker and trying to act like he don't know El Chapahan. And he's got no connection with him. And he don't, he don't know him. He don't like him. He's never had any dealings with him. You can see, you know, from that microphone that he's trying to distance himself from him. You know, because the walls are closing in on Coogan. You know, he couldn't go to America, could he? You know, to watch the uh, Katie Taylor Serrano fight. And he can't go and watch Canelo, you know, against Bivol. And you know, Coogan, he's like little fake mates with Eddie Earn, isn't he? They're all pally pally. So why would he not go to like those two big fights? You know, he's not allowed. That's why he's not allowed into America. He's being investigated. So he's trying to like distance himself, you know, from MTK. He's trying to like rewrite history, you know, pretend that he was never involved. 
you know, deleting videos where he's been like praising El Chapan. And, you know, he's trying to distance himself, isn't it? It's not allowed in America. You know, he sent Umar, IFL Umar, didn't he? Because Coogan's banned, man. He's not allowed in America. You know, taking off the sticker, you know, off that microphone. Coogan pulled it off, didn't he? He peeled it off. He desperately peeled it off so he could get into America. But he's not allowed. You know, he's barred. So he sent Umar, IFL Umar instead, didn't he? But yeah, what did you think of that interview with Coogan and Conor Ben? It wasn't all that, was it? It's, there was nothing new. There was nothing, there was no exclusives. You know, it's nothing we haven't heard before. You know what I mean? We've heard it all before, haven't we? You know, Conor Ben saying, oh, David Avenisian, you know, he's... I was denied a chance to box for the British title by Frank Warren. So why should I do him a favour by boxing his fighter, David Avenisian? Why should I do Frank Warren any favours? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm ranked above David Avenisian. So I'm, 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 I'm looking to fight bigger names who are higher up in the rankings. But Conor Ben's not even above David Avenisian. You know, in the WBC rankings. Can you see, like, Conor Ben's number five. David Avenisian's number two. So it's, it's one of them, innit? You know, Conor Ben saying, oh, why would I fight somebody below me in the rankings? One, he's not below you, he's above you. And two, Conor Ben saying he wants to fight Keith Furman, who's above Conor Ben in the rankings. So why would he fight you? You know, it's a bit hypocritical, innit? It's a bit contradictory. You're saying you're not going to box someone below you in the rankings, but you expect Keith Furman to box someone below him in the rankings, you. You know, you haven't really got a belt, have you? you got a few little international, intercontinental belts. So, Keith Furman, former world champ. You know, it's like a little step back for him, isn't it? But, you know, Conor Ben, he's a bit deluded, isn't he? He's, he's a bit arrogant. I don't know, it's like he thinks he's better than he is, you know, because he fucked up a little dietitian and a little fucking PE teacher. You know, so he's getting a bit cocky, isn't he? You know, because Eddie Earn keeps calling him a superstar. How is he a superstar, though? I still don't understand what you mean by superstar. Like, why is he a superstar? Like, in what way? Conor Ben was in Paris the other day, you know, with his, his girlfriend. And they were walking around and no one knew Conor Ben. No one knew him, you know what I mean? He wasn't having people go up to him and talk to him. Like, no one knew who he was. I think some boxers, I think they're fucking a bit deluded. I think they think that because they're kind of known, you know, in boxing, that they're superstars. They're not. Yeah. Kim Kardashian got robbed, you know, in Paris. She got mugged, you know, because, like, obviously people know who she is. Like, she really is probably a superstar. I don't really rate her, but, you know, I've got to call a spade a spade, you know what I mean? She is probably a superstar, especially compared to Conor Ben. Conor Ben's got about 550,000 followers on Instagram. Kim Kardashian's got 307 million followers on Instagram. So, you know, when you talk about Conor Ben's a superstar, he's not, is he? They're not superstar numbers. Yeah, they're decent numbers, in it from Conor Ben, but they're not like superstar numbers. You know, like Kim Kardashian or Rihanna. So that's why she got robbed, you know, in Paris, because people know her. And people know that she's got the bag, you know what I mean? And she's fucking a somebody to target. But Conor Ben, like, no one fucking went up to it. No one knew him, man. No one was asking him for photos or anything. So all this superstar business, you know, that Eddie Earn's talking about, it's a bit silly, isn't it? It's fucking silly talk from Eddie Earn, and he's exaggerating again. Eddie Earn says that Anthony Joshua will knock out Tyson Fury. You know what the fuck is that all about? What's all that shit? What's all that shit? You know what I mean? Eddie Earn said Dillian White would beat Tyson Fury. You know, and you've seen that uppercut. You know, he's saying that Joshua will beat Tyson Fury. If Tyson Fury didn't sign with fish eyes with the big dent in his forehead... And he signed with Eddie Earn. Eddie Earn would say that Tyson would fuck up Joshua. You know, Joshua got beat by a little fat fucker, Ruiz, and then he got fucked up by a little middleweight, Usyk. So Tyson Fury will fuck up Joshua. That's what Eddie Earn would be saying. You know, if Tyson Fury would have signed with him instead of Fish Eyes. 
So Eddie Earn is biased and he's fucking saying Connor Ben's a superstar. He's not. He's not, man. Not at all, is he? Boxing's a small world, man. You know, people outside of boxing don't really know people in boxing. Unless it's like a big name, like a Tyson Fury. You know, it's like when Eddie Earn was walking around America, you know, asking people if they knew Beyonce Wilder. And like most people didn't know him, did they? You know, in Beyonce Wilder's home country, like, people didn't really know him. So all this Conor Ben's a superstar business, it's a load of fucking nonsense in it from Eddie Earn. He's like a, a car salesman. You know, he used to sell like dodgy motors, you know, to old women where the fucking brakes didn't work properly. You know, he indirectly murdered them, didn't he, Eddie Earn? You know, to get the bag, you know, to get a bit of commission. You know, to get a bit of commission for selling a little dodgy motor. So that's what he's like. He's saying Tyson Fury will get knocked out by Joshua and Conor Ben's a superstar and all this nonsense. It's silly talk, isn't it? It's fucking dumb, man. She is probably a superstar, especially compared to Conor Ben. You know, Rihanna, she's got about 128 million followers, you know, on Instagram. So they're like superstar numbers aren't they like even Mayweather you remember when he tried to like try it on with Rihanna but she was having none of it you know she put some like tape over his mouth you know like to say oh I'm not interested you know I'm not interested you're not on my level you're not on my superstar level you know she was having none of it was she she was like saying like I don't care if you call yourself money Mayweather I'm a billionaire and she isn't she that Rihanna you know she she broke into the billionaire list, you know, after she got involved in that beauty product, Fendi. Her earnings, like, fucking skyrocketed, you know, after that little deal. So, you know, Mayweather calling himself Money Mayweather, you know, he don't really touch Rihanna, you know, financially. Or as far as, like, followers or whatever. Yeah, a good little boxer, one he Mayweather, but I don't, I don't. I don't know. Rihanna, she wasn't having any of it, was she? You know, and that's Mayweather, in it? So, you know, Conor Ben, come on, man. Cut the shit. But yeah, Conor Ben, he's getting a bit arrogant, isn't it? He? He's getting a bit cocky, man. You know, now he's getting a bit of posse and that. He's getting a few women pregnant. So he's getting a bit cocky now, isn't he? You know, he's got a little son on it, Eli. So, you know, now he's getting a bit of attention from women. He's getting a bit cocky, isn't he? He's getting a bit stuck up, you know, locking down on good fighters. Like that David Avenesian. So, yeah, Conor Ben, he's a bit arrogant, isn't he? He's a bit stuck up, man. He's getting a bit cocky, isn't he? You know, because Eddie Earn's whispering all kinds of shit in his ears. You know, hyping him up, fucking gassing him up. It's Eddie Earn, isn't it? It's Eddie Earn's fault, isn't it? You know, he's saying Kel's hiding from him, you know, Kel has conveniently gone missing. That's what he's saying in it, Connor Ben. You know, Kel Brooks' performance against the Skype Wanker. Yeah, the Skype Wanker, he's got a little popper dumb chin, he's he's finished, he's got nothing left, but still I think Kel Brook has probably still got more. Even at this stage of his career, right at the end, to fuck up Conor Ben. Conor Ben hasn't done anything, you know, to like show that he's on that level of a of a Kell Brook or a Terence Crawford or a fucking Keith Furman or any of those fuckers. He hasn't really done anything, has he? He's beat up a few dietitians. But yeah, that'll do, you know, just a quick video about that little fucking Coogan peeling off the sticker, you know, the MTK Global sticker, you know, off his mic. You know, it's obvious, isn't it? You can see what he's done there, Coogan, you know what I mean? He's trying to distance himself, you know, from any kind of money laundering charges. He tried to take the sticker off snidely, didn't he? But we kind of noticed it, didn't we? Yeah, we noticed it. Yeah, we picked up on it, didn't we? 
But yeah, we'll see how it all unfolds anyway. We'll see if Coogan gets locked up. You know, that'll be quite an interesting little story on it. A nice little interesting narrative story. A nice little little twist in the plot. You know what I mean? Coogan was pro MTK, wasn't he? He was pro El Chapan. And now he might end up snitching on him, you know, to get like a reduced sentence. You know, that's what he's like in here, Coogan. He sold James Helder out in here, so he'll probably do the same to El Chapahan. But yeah, Coogan, he needs to just own up to it, don't he? Instead of peeling off stickers. He needs to just own up to it, man, you know. We can't blame him, you know, for taking, like, illegitimate money. Because money's money, innit? You know what I mean? If someone from MTK Global or Pro Bellum you know, approach me and said, oh, we'll, we'll give you a bit of cash, you know, to, you know, help your channel and you're helping us in return by helping us launder a bit of cash. I'd take that money. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? The police are watching these videos. Somebody reported my video, you know, of me in town interviewing nice women. Some fucker reported me to the police and he started knocking on my door, like, you know, the next day. You know, asking me about the video and that, because he had a few complaints, but pff, I don't care, man. Money's money, innit, man? So fuck the police, you know what I mean? You know, money's money, innit? Get the bag. But yeah, I'm going to wrap it up anyway. Let me know in the comments, you know, if you notice that little, that little sticker being removed, you know, from the fucking microphone of Coogan. Did you notice it as well? You did, didn't you? Let me know in the comments, yeah? Yeah, thanks for that.